Uh, super warm welcome to your Innovating Minds webinar on anxiety and you as this amazing person who can offer children with ongoing anxiety co-regulation. So I've got a couple of slides to share with you about this, just to, to keep us all thinking about anxiety, maybe, maybe in a way that you've not hugely thought about it before, because... I like to get us all thinking. So how can you use you, your co-regulation, which we're going to explore for children who have ongoing anxiety? Now, there is much good news in this, I have to say. And I'm aware from, you know, uh, training professionals that levels of anxiety for children of all ages have been increasing over the years. So this is very, very important and something that I'm sure you are all experiencing, working with all of the time. So it's great that we're together. And just be aware of yourself. So, you know, the topic is anxiety, feeling anxious, being anxious. And many, many, many adults, I, I would say most adults, uh, go through periods of anxiety where our systems are quite stuck so it's not that we're anxious because of something that's coming up that we've got to do that's very very normal children experience that we experience that and then we do the thing or the thing happens and then it goes away but sometimes the anxiety doesn't go away and then we feel stuck so just be aware that you know just even because we're looking at it and thinking about it and exploring it oh it might make you feel a bit anxious and that's you know fine then press pause step away or maybe today's not the day to be watching this webinar which is also completely fine it will still be there for you so some books i've been reading recently which are less science-based which is unusual for me <laughs> i'm a bit of a science geek um but did help me think or understand in even more depth and in different ways this ongoing anxiety that's really pretty running wild across the world particularly America seems to have you know at very very high levels but then we have to look at the medical system but still definitely a thing so an interesting book I read recently a very short read written by a journalist um, by Ruth Whitman Anxious in America and then Johan Harry's book which is looking at depression and anxiety they both added to my thinking because they're both journalists and they go and they actually talk to people and they talk to people who've done research so would recommend uh, the body keeps the score is always a, a good way to start understanding so much of what we think is in the head anxiety depression trauma lots and lots and lots of things it's a book that yeah it came quite quite a long time ago now but it begins to make us really understand I don't know this is about the body and again interpersonal neurobiology these are not light reads <laughs> at all um, the body keeps the score be very careful with because it's it talks a, in a lot of depth about trauma and depending on how you're feeling it may not be the right book for now uh, the pocket guide to interpersonal neurobiology is very 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 dense but it does it it helps us understand how there's a whole chemistry and biology to how we interact with others and how we're impacted by the biology and chemistry of others particularly when we're children but that said you'll be able to find on youtube presentations by by definitely by Bessel van der Kolk definitely Dan Siegel I'd imagine Johan Harry's on there as well and Dr Stephen Porges youtube is full <laughs> full of um, amazing interviews with him now, the pocket guide to polyvagal theory, again, slightly these pocket guides uh, for these very dense topics are a bit misleading because it's very, very, very complex. But his interviews are some brilliant ones on YouTube. Again, it's it helps us understand particularly things like anxiety, but many, many, many other things as being about the body. So who am I? Jane Evans. I work for Innovative Minds. I'm the co-creator of the Healing Together programs and the resources that we have. 
I'm also the trainer there for the Healing Together program, one of the trainers there. And I also am an author of four children's books. Some of you may have come across Little Meerkat's Big Panic or How Are You Feeling Today, Baby Bear, books for ch younger children, but around quite complex issues. I'm a coach. I coach people often, often adults who have ongoing anxiety. Sometimes they don't even realize it. You know, they're focused on the problem, but behind the problem that they want to shift and change is actually ongoing anxiety. I also sometimes pop up on television and in the radio. Uh, I'm usually used as an expert on things to do with raising children. So enough about me. Let's get on. Anxiety, it's nothing to do with an inability to think in a different way, but it is often treated that way with children and with adults. You know, when, when we know that a child is, is in a state of anxiety, particularly ongoing anxiety, we really, really want to make them feel better because if you've ever experienced it as an adult, so I had anxiety very severely at times but from the moment I was born and then very severe, severe periods of it I now have tiny little droplets of it but it's very very hard it's impossible to think yourself rationally out of it so we just need to be careful with children whether they're you know young people or younger children that we're not using a lot of phrases like this okay so you just need to calm down and, and don't worry and well let's look at actually what is going to happen and and we do it very well meaning wanting to help them wanting to make them feel better but because anxiety as we're going to look at isn't about thinking that doesn't make you the most useful resource what does make you the most useful resource is what is called, particularly um, first really talked about by Dr. S Stephen Porges, co-regulation. So that means that you can use the system, so you can see here in this uh, amazing image, running all through your body, particularly in the core of your body, you can use the systems there to calm you down, which means you then connect with a much calmer energy and chemistry with the child in front of you who's who's in a state of anxiety. And because you do that, this is where the co-regulation comes in, your stability on the inside, your balance, your calmness feeds into their system, which then starts to balance it out a little bit too and release a different chemistry in them. And then... <laughs> From their system being a bit more grounded, it feeds back into your system. That's where the co-regulation comes in. But we, as the adults, are the, are the ones offering it first and foremost. The fact that we get benefit from that is just great and makes us want to do it more. So we need to start thinking about anxiety as not brain-based. It's not about thinking in the wrong way having worrying thoughts do you have worrying thoughts when you have ongoing anxiety yes you do your head is full of them just stuff that makes no sense <clears throat> worrying all the time about what could go wrong what might happen what you might do wrong I mean imagine this in a in a six-year-old child but this is this is what happens to some children uh, going back over things thinking that they've upset somebody um, you know, there's a reward system in school. And although they're the child who does everything in their power to comply and, and never be in trouble, the fact that they know that they could be is enough to trigger a lot of anxious what if thinking. So is thinking involved? Yes. Is it the main problem and where the anxiety generates from? No. So what does it feel like? So anxiety is in the body it feels horrendous so again you know imagine yourself in that 12 year old body if it feels safe to imagine yourself in a five-year-old's body when all of this is going on and this will be going on inside of them a racing heart 
being a, a bit breathless and you know you you hear some children and they talk like this and, uh, 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 and feeling a bit sick a lot of the time and a bit dizzy and jumpy and tight and tense when you know we know for children that it should be a time in childhood when you get to be carefree and relaxed and not really think about anything too much other than how do planes stay in the sky and <laughs> stuff like that whereas with ongoing anxiety they're having this big physical experience plus all the anxious thinking most of the time which is beyond exhausting and makes concentrating and experience life as as f- fun and playing and all that kind of thing incredibly almost impossible to do and when I was years ago so in 2015 I did a TED talk uh, called Taming and Tending Your Meerkat Brain about anxiety because I've been working for years and years and years with families and children and young people by then and they kept teaching me so much and I'd started studying a lot of the science that was coming out as well and understanding the relationship between body and brain. And uh, I, yeah, so I I thought, yeah, I'll do it. Let's do a TED talk on it. Why not? <laughs> so I did talking about the model that I use to understand the, the, the areas of the brain. Now we know the brain is very complicated, but my simple model was just using a meerkat for the lower survival part connected to the body. Um, an elephant that doesn't forget for the emotional memory relational part. And then a, a clever, clever monkey, clever monkey for the top part of the brain, which I know is different to other models. But hey ho, um, I just used to look at a lot of children and a lot of young people and see them in this big kind of meerkat mode. So whilst putting together a few slides for my TED talk, I came across... <laughs> Because I find it hard to find data on uh, levels of medication in the UK. I'm sure there is. I'm just it's tricky to find. Whereas I've used this particular source for America many times now. And I was horrified, as I'm sure you are, to see these kind of figures. Anti-anxiety drugs for naught to one year olds. So babies anti-anxiety drugs for two to three year olds and don't fool yourselves that you know oh well I'm watching this in the UK I don't think any young children I I know that some preschool children definitely are on medication so let's just get real about this in America I know there's a, a different system but it's also happening in this country and many other countries as well which when we think about anxiety isn't an imbalance of any chemistry I assume that these drugs must be ones you know many many years ago as an adult I was put on beta blockers to just slow my heart rate down so I'm guessing they're that kind of thing but it doesn't solve anything so what kind of things might give you a heads up that a young person or a child or a group of children and young people you're working with has ongoing anxiety Well, in some, it presents as being very pleasing, trying to keep everyone happy, apologising a lot of the time, running around trying to make everything okay for everyone, getting very, very worried and resistant, even angry and fearful about change of any kind because it just overloads their poor body systems even more. really resistant to suggestions of things or maybe encouragement to have a go at things or anything really like a like a really strong resistant not a momentary one that you might see you know with my granddaughter sometimes we might say oh would you like to blah 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 and she'll say no and then when it settles in her brain oh yeah she does want to do it but what I mean is like this real pushback and uh, sometimes quite explosive that they have a real, real focus on everything being fair, things not being fair, why it's not fair, all that kind of thing. It, it's a phase that children go through, but carried on and carried on in life, often that can be a sign of anxiety. Needing everything that they do to 
be as perfect as they can make it. Their appearance, their work, what they do, what they say, everything. And sometimes they might also try and demand that of others because it just makes them feel a bit safer. Perfectionism comes from this kind of drive and desire for things to be predictable. And of course, as we know, that is, uh, makes life incredibly hard for a young person or a child, but also sometimes for everyone around them too. Super, super critical of themselves, but also often of other people. So that's another kind of presentation of anxiety, finding fault with others, always criticising hear this a lot from adults I have to say but it can also happen that I, I have worked with children in the past who are you know they, they spend a lot of time in fight flight so their system in their body especially their nervous system their autonomic nervous system perceives that they're constantly under attack so they find fault they attack back sometimes through criticism systematic everything has to be done the same way every time and if it isn't or if they can't complete the sequence highly highly anxious it there's a there's a, a a need in their system that gives them a bit of regulation and a bit of certainty if they can get from one end of whatever it is you know it's the way they pack their school bag or it's the way they come into the house or how they walk to the classroom and get to their seat and get settled they've got a system running 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 all the time but of course as we know sometimes that will get interrupted and you might see a big big outburst a big state of overwhelm laser focused on stuff in a way that's very very intense and again if it gets disrupted it causes them a lot of distress just keep away when you're in this ongoing state of anxiety, 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 being with, around, dealing with other people's energy, smell, sounds, anything, too much. So it can be a, a way a child will stumble upon of just with, you know, not not feeling so overwhelmed. So they don't want to take part in stuff. They don't want to go. They don't want to do things that we think <laughs> misguidedly sometimes that children want to do. So why? What, what's what's going on? What's going on for our babies, our children, our young people? I'm again, I was doing some research recently, and this book I found very, very useful, thinking about children and babies' behaviors and how they've evolved and how they do evolve from the get-go. So pre-birth and beyond. There's something called the autonomic nervous system, which is part of the nervous system. So the, the, the system that's running in the body and, and through the brain, they're all interlinked. The autonomic nervous system is part of that. And it regulates things like heart rate, the lungs, so breathing, blood sugar levels, um, adrenal glands, you know, the release of adrenaline and cortisol and, and all those things. And it starts forming in the womb. So whatever's going on whilst the, the baby is forming in the womb, and especially in the first few months of life, has a big impact on how the child's nervous system learns to operate. And the autonomic nervous system is like the watchdog for inside of all of us. It's very, very fast to react anything at all and it will quickly fling a child fling us into a state of fight flight most commonly or into a state of complete shutdown and withdrawal we don't decide on this it's just what happens and depending on what happens early on in a child's life certain things it becomes highly reactive to and you know things that actually aren't a threat to life so having a a teacher, a different teacher one day because the other teacher's off sick isn't an actual threat to life. But for some children, the change, the loss of their attachment figure, their autonomic nervous system perceives automatically this is potentially dangerous, even though we would know logically, of course, that they're not dangerous. They're just another teacher. 
But this is this is how it all operates. And that's why so often children's behaviors don't make sense. And then I love what Bruce Perry, uh, Dr. Bruce Perry talks about as well. Some of you may have read the recent book that he wrote with uh, Oprah Winfrey, What Happened, oh, I forgot what it's called now, What Happened to You? <laughs> Good job, it's on the slide. Um, he's focused for a long, long time on looking at the brain and exploring and sharing with us how the brain goes through a sequence. So when it receives information through the senses and through the whole of the body, the body's always on receive mode in terms of information. So, you know, you can feel different energies in the environment. Uh, you can pick up on it that way without even realizing that you're doing it. That's that's what happens so much for all of us, which Dr. Stephen Paul just talks about neuroception. And then there's the senses of smell and taste and touch and sight and sound and also what's going on inside your body and information from other people that all comes in and then it goes up. It always follows the same sequence and it may not get to what Bruce Perry talks about, the smart part of our brain. Because with anxiety, a child tends to be operating so much of the time in the more survival focused parts of the brain and the more emotional, emotional parts of the brain. So getting to their super intelligent brains, which they will have, very, very hard to do, which means studying, being in school, learning, super difficult. So if we as the co-regulators of these amazing children, shift our focus away from trying to talk them out of their anxiety, rationalize them, get them to talk about how it feels, what they might need and all the rest of it. And we start focusing on the body, then we're in the right space. I was watching this recent interview with Dr. Stephen Porges, who is the creator of something called polyvagal theory. And he, through discovering it, you know, what he discovered with polyvagal theory has been talking for years and years and years and years and years about how pretty much everything, but particularly things like anxiety and depression are so much about the state of the nervous system. Is it in a state of balance and safety and connection or is there a big imbalance in it which means that there's a lot of fear 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 so that kind of big fight flight energy which really does fuel things like anxiety so he invites us all and this is certainly what I find very very much in the work that I do to view anxiety as something that is based and generated by the body it's an, a nervous system particularly an autonomic nervous system that's got out of balance and is a is living in a constant state of <gasps> even though there are no tigers there are no bears there's no danger to life in this moment at all but <gasps> means tense, tight, can't think, racing heart, all those things that we know are so, so hard, particularly for children. So <laughs> what can we do? Well, first of all, please, please know that this, this kind of information is not widely shared and understood. It's still believed, you know, particularly in more formal ways that anxiety is something to do with the brain. So if you have been doing a lot of talking to children and trying to get them to talk about and think about things differently, you've been doing what you knew to do. So you haven't been doing anything to fail the children. Please know that. And they are certainly not failing because maybe they aren't much calmer or they were calmer for a bit. And now three months later, they they're not able to safely feel okay to come to school again or to take part in PE or, or whatever it is. So they are definitely not failing either. It's just that their poor nervous system inside their body is very stuck. It's actually in this part of your body, the kind of central area here, in an ongoing state of 
feeling feeling scared and it doesn't matter how many times you try and tell this part of the body that it's safe and it doesn't need to be scared it doesn't care the words aren't going to do anything what we can do is what we'll look at in a moment and it starts with us which is use our bodies to help their bodies to feel safer and then they get a chance to feel a bit bits more settled so it really really relies so much the children really really rely on you on you focusing on something very very simple that you can do to see i'm just rocking backwards and forwards that just calms your body now for you rocking backwards and forwards may not feel so not fast but slowly it may not feel particularly calming and grounding so you're going to have to experiment a bit to find out what is your thing so i discovered because i've been doing this stuff for a very long time now that slowly intentionally rocking backwards and forwards and if i just do it once or twice from my heels forward to my toes actually does send messages up from my body to my brain that my brain then just settles a bit some people it might be rocking gently from side to side so i've noticed sometimes when i've watched things back you, you know from a few years ago where i've been doing presentations that sometimes i've started you know just doing this a bit because obviously i wasn't feeling very calm but get curious about this stuff you've probably got things like i was that you were already using uh some people you know when they're talking they put their hands kind of on the back of their head and they open up their chest area without re realizing it and actually if you're head and your body if this is a signal of i am safe to them then you'll start to feel more relaxed so i'm not saying to you go do really complicated stuff i'm saying find your one thing that your body <sighs> just receives as a signal of in this moment we're all right we're okay sends the information up to the brain brain settles down a bit now you're an amazing co-regulating resource for the children around you and you know doing what you're doing this is something you need to be doing throughout the day every day of your life quite frankly but so do we all all of us as adults and anything we're offering to the children we need to be doing it very very slowly we need to only ever be doing it as an invitation so once you've just grounded yourself a bit you might say to to a young person or a child you know are you okay would you would you like to take a breath and they might be far too woo, to be able to do that that's okay they don't have to but by the offering and particularly if you're modeling this if this is part of how you are around the children and around the young people then they just see you doing it in a very authentic way or oh, i just need to take a breath just get myself settled it becomes the norm to do this kind of stuff very helpful so what you're offering is body based it's regulating your body you're modeling it and you're inviting them if they want to so breath breath can be very very grounding but not for everyone so be careful for yourself these are some images from my uh, little meerkats big panic book so, yeah so for some of us when i first started trying to breathe down into my body it felt horrible and it made me go all panicky so i i kept kept slowly going at it but while i was lying down in bed so that <laughs> I couldn't fall anywhere if I got panicky it took took time so again don't worry if you think oh I'll just do that breathing technique that I saw on something and you start doing it and you think whoa that's made me feel worse that's that's okay you don't need to do it that way you know for example for me if I breathe in through my nose and I count in my head and breathe out counting now I can do it but in the beginning for quite a long time it used to make me feel worse because there was now counting and oh, who knows so go slowly go carefully and absolutely know that you must go slowly and carefully with the children as well and then anything body-based may feel regulating and may feel calming find your thing and go very slowly on this journey with the children as well and 
what we do in at Innovating Minds, so we have a, a healing together program for children with ongoing anxiety, and which you can train in. And what we do is we give the children and give the young people the insights into what is going on in their bodies and brains. So some of you might recognize uh, Dr. Dan Siegel's hand brain model. Uh, that features in one of the animations that you would be sharing with the children and the young people. So they start to get, oh, there's a connection between all of this. And actually, I can use this as a resource. And we share resources with them very, very carefully. And, you know, you're the facilitator. So you model it. You just demonstrate it. They don't have to try it. There's literally no pressure on them because what's the worst thing you can do to a child with anxiety is put more pressure on them. Um, it's an offering so they get to explore and to understand a bit more what's going on in their bodies and brains so that moving forwards, they can start building with this ongoing, ongoing support of the adults around them, at least one simple tool that the adults around them help help them you know draw on so again it's down to the adults to be the co-regulators and support the children we're never saying come and learn this stuff and go off and use it and with anxiety it's it's really important to remember so if you're able to take a screenshot of this page please please do this uh this slide that it starts with you always and you know if you're coming into your setting for the day you've had a whole morning to get there and you know have a many hours that's been and all sorts of things have happened so make sure when you get in that you get in the habit maybe as you're walking through the door of just <gasps> doing something that just shakes that all off a bit and grounds you before you even get near the children because then they bring all of their energy and those with anxiety bring all of their anxiety near you so when we are offering our calmness it's less with words, it's more through our bodies, simple phrases, not lots of big complicated talking, anyone who's overwhelmed, if you ever had that yourself, you're feeling overwhelmed, and someone's doing a lot of talking at you and explaining. <laughs> so use your tool, it might be that you use your breath, or it might be something else, it's more important that you're there as this simple, calming being, than lots and lots of talking and suggestions and ideas and all the rest of it. Whatever you do, you know, you might discover one child that this works really, really well, another child not so well, and they they embrace this. Brilliant. Keep repeating what, what works for you and what works for them. They may come to you at some point and say, oh, I've stopped doing that now and I, I do this instead. Brilliant. We really, really don't mind. It's just repetition, repetition, especially for anxiety is often the key. And rhythm, rhythm, the lower the body and the lower part of the brain that we're trying to settle rhythm, not fast rhythm, but slower rhythm. So think of, you know, picking up a baby. What does everybody do? Picks up baby, puts usually puts them on their heart and starts pat, 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 rock, rock, rock. It's just built into humans to do that. Most humans. Uh, so anything rhythm based can again become a resource. It doesn't need to be anything complicated. It can just be anything that you, you know, you could be doing something like this with your hands behind your back, your hands in your lap, but that simple rhythm, squeezing together, taking a breath or two if you want to, it all helps send a message to the body. I am calm, I am safe, up to the brain. Now you've become this lovely co-regulating energy for the children. Perfect. So you are absolutely the core and the key of this. Children can only start to feel better, whether we call that recovery or whatever we, we choose to call it, within safe relationships. They can't do this stuff on their own. It's not about teach them stuff, send them off. It's about them regularly being able to plug into your internal safety, calmness and balance. So focus on that and you're doing something absolutely incredible for them. And if you want to know more about the, the Healing Together 
uh, supporting children with ongoing anxiety, then just get in, get in touch and we'll uh, we'll walk you through it. Okay, so maybe some ways that you're very familiar, uh, you know, when it comes to thinking about anxiety, maybe ways that add on to what you already knew. Go slowly with all of this. Before I knew about polyvagal theory and all the systems in our bodies and all the rest of it, I would never have thought so much about how vital I was as the adult in the children's lives in that way. I was often looking at them like, you know, what can I do for you rather than how can I be for you? So remember that phrase, how can I be for you? 